Hi, Yasser. Hello, Sigan. Yasser, uh, I got to know you through your books. Yes. And they were simply amazing. My first oh, book you. of yours was Winning Chess Openings. Right. Uh, and I started to learn openings through that. Then Winning Chess Brilliancies, mm -hmm. which was a book where every single move was annotated by you. Right. And then the chess duels where you write about your experiences with world champions. That was a fun book. And so today I wanted to, you know, I met you for the first time in person. Right. And uh, doing this interview, I wanted to talk to you about books. Yeah. And some of the books that have made an impression on you. Right. Well, for me, books were my like my first bridge into the chess world, if you will, because I... Uh, as I got started, it wasn't easy even to connect into the chess um, society. Uh, there wasn't like you could look in the white pages or yellow pages and find a chess club. And I went to the Seattle Public Library and I was taking out books and reading the books from uh, the shelves. And in those days, it was sort of like Reuben Fine, Irving Cherna, Fred Reinfeld were really kind of the dominant American authors. And so I would be pulling out these old books, you know, which uh, were, let's say, quite dated. And while I read them, I wouldn't say they were enjoyable or edifying or something like that. But the first book, or I better say two volume series that made a powerful impression on me were the two volumes by Alexander Alekhine. On his again, best games. Yeah, on his oh. best games. And again, that two volume series was very, very outdated, but the way he wrote and more succinctly the way he played was something completely alien to me. It was like, wow, who, you know, this is really, you know, a powerful player with great ideas and you know kinetic energy to his moves and uh, I was over the moon. Uh, later I came under the spell of David Bronstein and um, Michael Tall, mm -hmm. most especially Michael Tall. I felt that in his book on the 1960 World Championship match, he had hit a chord that was just supreme. Mm -hmm. like, I think that's like the greatest book ever written. Uh, the the 60 match with Botwinnik that, yes, that he that won, that he himself wrote. That's right. Uh -huh. I felt like like he was talking to me, that I was sitting at his elbow as he was explaining to me why he made this move and that move. And I found his humor to be just brilliant. And then, you know, Michael Tall's My Life in Games was just like, I'm laughing almost with every page. And he was really a fantastically entertaining writer who I would like to say really was this great influence, but I, I can't write like Michael Tall, who can? And I can't play like Michael Tall, who can? But I really, I want to say I modeled a lot of my writing and inspiration from his uh -huh. uh, work because I just found it so compelling. Today, when I think about authors that I really like, I like John Nunn, Larry Christensen, Jeremy Selman, I uh, even John Watson has written some really wonderful books, and I think that the quality of the books too has just whoosh, increased in the sense that we have these tools for publishing and layout, so that the quality of the paper, the quality of the books themselves, the bindings are, are really massively improved. But then the analysis, mm. the content, it's like they're computer checked. And uh, you like that? I love that. I love the fact that uh, that that the books are of such a higher quality than the ones from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, and today, I just think we're, as far as books are concerned, we're living in a, in a marvelous age. I see, though, that the future is going to digitalization. Mm -hmm. More and more, I see like chessable courses, and I converted my books to chessable courses uh -huh. because I thought there, with a digital file, you can 
play through the games much easier, you can play through the notes much easier, and you can have video and audio files of the game. So it's one thing if I say, well, here, you know, I wasn't really sure to play. I was going to play this move, but then I realized there was that, and then I, oh, then I spotted this really cute idea, so I played it like that. And somehow, when the telling of the move and the ideas behind a move belie what's written on the pa paper, if I say, oh, good move, mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing on paper, exclamation mark, good move. It's another thing if uh, I say, well, at this moment, I thought, man, this is just a crackerjack move. And uh, I double checked to make sure, and then when I played the move and I pressed that clock, I was just expecting that resigns to come. Uh, totally different thing, Absolutely. right? I mean, there's the page, the words are on the page, and they're lifeless. Then you have the voice and the uh, gestures and the eyes and the animation. And I tell stories, for example, in chess duels, which you mentioned as we were about to start right. the interview. Uh, the stories are nice, but then when they're told in the first person, like, you know, and then Gary, you know, <laughs> shook the table. Well, I mean, you can almost feel like the table was getting shook. So, yeah, I would say that while chess was my bridge mm -hmm. and brought me into the world of chess, I see that today's generation are really being brought into chess through online play, through you know digital interactions with the computer, the engine, the databases, and the courses. Mm. Um, also YouTube videos because the, the I YouTube remember lectures. your yeah. your video uh, on the game with Karpov, yes. where where you took D D, and just because he had played G six. You had won that game. Yes. And you explained that. And that was like so revealing for me. Right. Uh, which is like Thank a 40 you. minute video on, I think, St. Wow. Louis Chess Club right. uh, channel. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for that. And again, uh, that's uh, one of the things that really stunned me. I had gone to Baku as the ladies team captain for the U.S. ladies. And uh, there was a room where uh, a lot of the captains went to sit and, you know, just unwind and get a coffee or, you know, something like that. And I'm sitting there and like all of these captains are coming to me and it was really complimentary and saying, I love your YouTube videos from the St. Louis Chess Club. And the crazy part is a lot of these people who say to me, I love your, your video from St. Louis Chess Club where you talk about the French. <laughs> <laughs> It's like they they think that I have an encyclopedic uh, knowledge of every video I've ever done. I think there must be a hundred videos. Let's just mm. put it like that on the on the St. Louis uh, Chess Club site on the YouTube. There must be a hundred. But if you ask me, what did that? What did you say in that lecture? Right. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I completely have no idea. So it's 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 sometimes very funny for me when the play, people come up and they pay me a compliment and say I I liked your mm -hmm. lecture of the French defense and I, I I learned to play the French defense and in the Rubenstein variation the French defense where you recommend B, Bishop to D three. Do you still recommend that? <laughs> Like, what's bishop d3? <laughs> what's the position? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me out of here. <laughs> so it is fun. And that is very, very enjoyable when the people come up right. and say that. The, and for, for, for me, it was really nice. One, one the little tight young kid, he came up to me at the St. Louis Chess Club and said, Mr. Share one, Mr. Share one. He said, would you please sign my book, Mr. Share one? I said, do you have it with you? Oh, yes, it's right here in my backpack. And this little boy opened up his backpack. 
and he pulled out the rattiest book. I mean, this book looked like it had been chewed over by the family dog for the better part of two years. And I mean, the pages were torn and missing, and all everything was in a color, like this was red and that was green, and it, it all meant something, and I'm looking at this book. I said, hey, did, did you read the book? Oh, yes, we sure, we sure wrote a book. It's really good. It was a good book. I, I, I like it a lot. So I, I signed the book. You know, <laughs> you know, and away he goes. But as an author, that was so enjoyable for right. me. Compared to somebody who gives me this pristine book that looks like it's been kept in some vault and never opened. Right? Got it. This book, on the other hand, was really enjoyed. And that for me was what it's all about being an author. And and when you have this style of let's say writing or even narration yeah. and the way you say things, I think even commentary but all these instructional videos, where did that come from? Was it natural for you? Did you learn it? Or did you did someone make an impact? Mm. On you, as you said, um, Michael Tal. But yes, uh, apart from um, that, the way you speak, coaching. I had. I was very lucky in the sense that uh, I fell in a circle of friends who were a little bit older, but not so much so. And you know, we would analyze together, and you know, what is that variation or all about? What is that opening, and what does that defense mean? And I think that in those discussions, and I really want to describe them as discussions, there were friendly voices. It wasn't like um, uh, a strict voice or a, a, a voice um, with reprimand. How dare you didn't see that move and what, what have you been analyzing or something like that. It was sort of like, boy, I don't know. But wouldn't it be exciting if we could get our bishop to f6? If we could get our bishop to f6, we got these sacrifices on the h file. We got rook hg. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, but dude, there's no way to get the bishop to f6. So it was this easy pitter patter style. No severity, no reprimand, no no anger. Just like oh boy, this like a, a kind of a search for the truth. And I think. That for me, you know, if somebody wants to teach me, I want them to teach me in that way, in mm -hmm. that dialect of just friendly banter. Uh, uh, wait, 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 just consideration here. There's something else going on. And for me, I pick that up and I love it. I, I'll run with that all day. I like that type of uh, somebody talking to me. So if I teach, in a unique manner or a manner that you like, it's because I'm saying to myself, I would like to be mm. taught like this. This is this is the way I respond. I'm not the Marine military training, give me ten push ups if you get the move wrong. Actually I should be doing some push ups these days. Uh, but but yeah, that so I I really like this soft dialectic uh, reasoned approach why did you do that hmm. wow well now that you explain to me why you made that move I understand why you made the move it is a mistake and the reason it's a mistake is because you even had this better move but because you were able to articulate your move and uh, support your variation I applaud the fact that you made that move and made that effort, right? And to me, you know, complimenting a mistake because it had a plan behind it, you know, you know, I, I think we're all going to be making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And if all you ever get is wrong, 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 Something else to do, <laughs> you know, right? But so you you, you started working. People. But you you worked with Victor Korchnoi when yes. you were young, Twins. and I think his way of oh. sort of teaching or let's say discussing this, was this is the Marine boot camp. right. Yeah. That, so that so you could have gotten that style. 
I but could didn't. have. It wasn't appealing to me, but I could have. I learned a lot from that style, and I, I, I recognize that it, it, it's completely valid, this military style of teaching. Today, we're going to learn checkmates. I'm going to teach you the five checkmates, and then at the end of the class, we review what we have learned, the five checkmates, which I have taught you. <laughs> So it's like this, you know, repetitive, you know, drilling, if you will. And I, I, there are a lot of chess books that drill in to you uh, certain lessons that the author considers key, you know. And again, it's just a different style. For me, I do what I would find appealing. If a teacher is, is working with me, then I, I like it that way. Brilliant. And let's imagine that today... You have to recommend a few books yes. to people yes. for improvement, yes. for people who want to get better at right. chess. Who And you think these are some books which can help them to have yes. a very strong base, yes. which I actually found while commentating with you yeah. that in spite of you not playing chess anymore, yeah. Yeah. your base is so strong, you are able to find such great ideas. I think... It, of course, it's because of hard work, sure. but there could be some things that people could do to, you know, uh, to have a very strong base exactly. for them. Uh, for me, I would say to you, the viewer, that uh, don't think in terms of books or titles or something like that. Think in terms of the authors, people who writings appeal to you. For example, again, another author that I really enjoyed was Paul Keras. Mm. For me, the clarity of his writing and the um, ideas connected behind the moves, he articulated them and he spoke clearly. So find an author that you like, and the world is full of chess authors. Secondly, I love book collections that talk about um, best games. I love the best games collection. You know, you could sit there and learn the Sveshnikov, uh, the book, you know, some thick book opening on the Sveshnikov, and it will give you a very good uh, material for the Sveshnikov. But, you know, focusing only on the opening to the exclusion of the middle game and the exclusion of the end game, I don't find that very good. And I think it's like developing just a bicep in the body or something like that. Just you're developing your arms, you're not developing your legs or your abs. So I think that when you have a book that's, mm. you know, the complete games of, I don't care, Gary Kasparov, uh, Bobby Fischer, John Nana, Vishwanathan, and on, uh, the best games. And most especially if they're annotated by the player themselves, that for me is where I really draw inspiration and knowledge because I see how the opening gets connected to these middle game patterns that fall into these mm -hmm. end games that occur from open Sicilians or from French defenses or from Karo Khans and you can see this flow and these patterns keep repeating themselves and I've seen many of Vichy's games where it's the total package. And if you just only learn in the openings or if you're only studying a certain end game, you're missing so much. So for me, that resonates very, mm. very loudly. Uh, finally, um, the single best way to learn is really develop a friendship with a group of players who you like playing with. You like literally you go to the club, you smash the clock and you play blitz and you analyze with and you have a rapport because that feeds you to success. Mm. You want to be friends, but you want to impress them, you want to be rivals, and you want to beat the guys down the street uh, in the uh, ultimate challenge matches and stuff like that. So for me, I, I really love the social aspect of chess. And right. That, that strengthens my resolve to work harder or, it stre or it just, you know, it, it tightens the bonds that I have uh, with my chess friends. 
And so for me, um, don't neglect that social aspect. Don't just be a hermit, you know, in your library and study away and, you know, reappear magically for the tournament. But go to the tournament with a group of friends and, you know, <laughs> live and die, struggle with them as uh, they go through the tournament. And it just makes it that much more enjoyable. Beautiful. And which is your favorite book that you have written? My favorite book that I have written, oh my goodness, I, I, you know, it was probably the, the, the hardest project I ever wrote, but that was Chess Duels, and that was, again, uh, my games and stories with all of these world champions that I have right. come across in my career. I should be updating it because I played more games post the Chess Duels book when it was published, but uh, for me, that book and you know, re recounting uh, my uh, contests uh, with these, the greatest chess players in the world. Yeah, I, 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 I think chess, chess duels, although I must say is something very special about the very first book I ever wrote, which was Five Crowns. That book was about the five world championship matches between Kasparov and Karpov, focusing on the fifth and final one. And that was the book that when I met Bobby Fischer, he praised it to the skies for like the first five minutes. I had like 3,000 questions that I wanted to ask Bobby Fischer. We're shaking hands. And he spends five minutes talking about five crowns. Like, I'm like, thank you. But, and, and then he says, you know, there's two, there's two analytical mistakes in the book. The book's like 230 pages. I'm, I'm reams and reams and reams of notes on, on most of the moves. And I'm like, only two. <laughs> two, two, two and all of the errors? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, which ones are them? And he finds the one that I, of course, found right away. And then he finds the second, which I, of course, found like in the second or third rereading of the book. And it's like, I had found two mistakes and he matched them. And I was like, well, 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 wait a minute, dude. This is a, a pretty big, thick book with, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm making a lot of judgment calls. This is pre-computer. This was not a computer check thing. And this is a guy saying that he found the two mistakes. He didn't put in 10 hours reading that book. He didn't put in 20 hours reading that book. Bobby Fisher, the Bobby Fisher, Spent a week, wow. you know, going through that book to find those two analytical errors. So the very first book, Five Crowns, I ever wrote, got this massive compliments from Bobby Fisher. <laughs> wow, you know, like knock me over. Uh, that was that was quite the compliment. Amazing. And I have one final question Please. for you. So you. Um, you know, I see that you are very much in sync with what's happening in the present. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, you say this is the golden era of chess. Whatever are the new developments, you take it up and so on. So here's my question to you, because this is something that uh, I have been, I've seen, I'm seeing in the chess world that young players yeah. don't really feel there's a need to read classical books, yes. games of great champions of right. the past, and they can still reach a very good level of chess. Yep. So what is your take on this thing? Yes. Do you think, because I see a lot of people advocating it. In fact, recently I was sitting at Boris Gelfand's session and he was saying that this is something that you guys should do. What is your take? Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, Really, uh, almost immediately, I can tell you I'm on several minds of this. So first of all, I think that if you do go through the history of chess and you go over the games of Paul Morphy and Steinitz and Emmanuel Lasker and others, you're doing yourself a favor. Stop. You're learning the history of chess. You're, 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 you're improving your knowledge of uh, the game. But you can set that aside for just a second and say, well, wait a minute, though. 
There's these super engines that are 3,200, 3,400, I don't care, 3,600, that are playing a chess and a level of accuracy that supersedes today's top players by several factors, never mind the fact that you know a player right. at 100 years, 200 years ago could easily be blundering all over the place according to our chess engines of today. Why should I spend my time studying the games of Steinitz when he had some fixed ideas that were really terrible? And they were terrible. So you have a player, you know, for me, a, a once in a generation talent like Hikaru Nakamura, who literally was raised with a computer, uh, became his best friend. He plays against a computer, and it's almost like he's computer like in his approach to a position. And he doesn't know the games of Vasily Smyslov, and he right. doesn't know the games of Effen Geller. Or, uh, and it's sort of like, Who's that guy? You know, and he doesn't read chess books because he says, "Well, why should I? I don't need to have this prestigious knowledge of the history of mm. chess. What I need is a move that's going to win me the game tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and you know, you listen to him and the way he speaks, and you know the success he has. There you go. I can't really argue with you on that one, uh, Hikaru. I think uh, you, you made a pretty good uh, you know, explanation for his approach to chess. And again, it works for him. So I would say, you know, do what you enjoy. And mm -hmm. for me, learning the history of chess, it wasn't a, a task. It wasn't something that was rigorous. It wasn't something I fought against. It's something I fell into. And I quite frankly enjoyed. Mm. So uh, learning about the great heroes and players of the past and their trials and tribulations was something like, like a, like you know, a passing of knowledge, and it reinforced a little bit my love for chess. And I, I love the history of chess and how it keeps us bound together. Now again, you know, a young player today sits there and says, well, gee, I only have 40 hours that I can spend. Uh, I, I better spend it with my stockfish and uh, playing chess online. Okay, I can see that. I'm not going to say uh, anything against it. If it works for you, brilliant. Right. Well, yes, sir. Thank you for these insights. My pleasure. And also, I want to tell you that you are a unique personality in the world of chess wow, and you. and your contributions are truly immense thank you for all that you have done my uh, pleasure and, and a big shout out to you cigar for everything that you have done and bringing chess to india and to um fans i just want to put it like that enthusiast because you too i mean everybody plays their role right and you've made a a, a huge impact as well Thank you, Yasser. Means a lot. Cheers.